Welcome to Manhattan. Manhattan Country Club in Manhattan Beach, California for the semifinals of the Acura Classic. Tonight's semifinal features Serena Williams, the younger of the two Williams sisters, against world number two, the number number one, number two seeded Martina Hingis. I'm Leo Levin alongside Andrea Yeager. Andrea, you can feel the buzz in the crowd tonight. Absolutely, what excitement. Martina Hingis, obviously coming off a tough Grand Slam summer of tennis, but she's come back strong, won the last tournament. She's always tough to beat. She's back to number one in the world where she likes to be. She's definitely a front runner. She doesn't feel when she walks on the court that anybody really has a chance to beat her. And that's kind of an attitude that uh, caused some problems at the French Open this year. Well, there you can see age 18. And so much fuss has been made about her, about having a, a tough year. And look at all the tournaments she's won. Great record, 46 and seven. Singles titles, five. She's won the Australian, the first Grand Slam of the year. Came back and won Tan Pacific, Hilton Head, San Diego, which was just a few weeks ago. She had a great start to the year and won her third straight Australian Open title. And the younger of the two Williams sisters, Serena, just 17 years old. Powerful player. Very different styles out on court tonight. Serena Williams uses a lot of her power to help her get matches under her ranking. And W Tour singles ranking number 11, age 17, practices and her sides in Palm Beach Gardens. But good match record for her. She's won two titles this year. That has really boosted her confidence and just under $670,000 in prize money. Yeah, that Paris Open victory or Paris Indoor uh, was her first title on tour and came in a tie break against Emily Moresmo, the, the French woman who upset Davenport at the Australian early this year. And to just let you know, the defending champion, Lindsay Davenport, was defeated in the first semifinal today in straight sets. Kingas and Williams have played four times. Kingas has the upper hand. Last meeting quite decisive. 6-2-6-2. Williams to serve the opening game. Serena Williams to serve. Showing that power on the first point. Looks yeah. great that she had. Both of the Williams sisters, big serves, powerful ground strokes. They don't hold anything back. Closer to 40 love. She manages to get the job done, but she doesn't have that positioning that Martina Hingis is known for. Hingis always seems to have great balance, good footwork, terrific hands up at net, where Serena more or less powers her way through a point, and in fact, sometimes even lumbers to balls because she doesn't have the experience and the match matches behind her to really know which direction to go and, and what to read off of a player's racket. 
Well, what makes Martina oh. Hingis so good? Because it doesn't like, seem like she has any real major weapons compared to some of those power players like Davenport and Williams. Well, Hingis just has an incredible aptitude to know where a player is hitting a ball. She really can foresee what is happening in point. She's a good counter puncher when she needs to be. But the other aspect is she's the best all-around player that has happened in a long time. Usually you used to see serving volleyers or baseliners. She has the ability to do both. Well, the match is open with five straight points to Williams. The thing I admire most about Hingis is her ability to change her game when it's not working. There she goes. Hit that backhand long, but her backhand down the line is one of her strengths. And she also has a tremendous ability to play to an opponent's weakness, more so than any other player out there on the circuit. First point of the match for Hingis. 1530. 1530. And she follows out with her first base. I think her serve can be a weapon, and sometimes it's a weakness. But she's really improved upon it. She never relied on it. She used to just hit her serve to get the point started. Now she realizes she can finish the point with her serve. But that one got finished by Williams, and she has the first break point of the match. Serena guesses right. And with confidence, just hits a cross for it. I doubt we're going to see very many long rallies in this match. Serena knows if she's going to win this, she has to end the points early and go for her shots. She's not the type of player to hold back and just wait for an error from Higgins. Two easy errors there from Williams, and now Hingis has game point. But that's a risky kind of game to play, especially against somebody who's as steady and consistent as Martina Hingis. for the second time. Well, experience is a big factor here. Serena knows that the ball's hit with depth and she can close off the point a lot easier up at net. Good first serve from Hingis. The history of these players is so different. The Williams sisters did not play many junior tournaments, whereas Hingis played so many, she was practically the world champion many times over before she turned pro. And Hingis fights off a break point to hold. It's one off. Good look at the Hingis service motion. She doesn't really go up after it like a lot of the other players do. She, that time she just wanted to get the ball in the court. You can see her just springing backwards, waiting for the baseline. Rallying. And that's where she's starting to learn. When she goes up after serve, it's a bigger weapon. If she just places it like that, then perhaps she might not be in as much contention right away at the beginning of a point. Especially important against players who have as much power as a Serena Williams. As you can see, Williams dominating with the winners. But the match is even at one all. But that will be the tale of the whole match. Winners versus unforced errors for Serena Williams. Because she really goes for her shots. And if she can come up with them on the big points, well, perhaps she can cause an upset. Good use of angle there from Williams.
some great defensive play from Hingis. She's one of those players that makes you hit one more ball. She really is. And Serena has had the ability to know what it takes to beat Martina Hingis. She beat her at the Lipton Championships earlier this year. And that always helps when you've beaten a player once. You know, you've gotten over that first hurdle. one of the things that sets her apart from the other players, her ability to play the transition game, take the short ball, get into net, put pressure on the opponents. Time. Serena was able to make the most of it, another forehand winner. But you can tell the footwork is just not extraordinary from Serena. She powers the ball back. That time she's able to move in a few steps and strike it. But a lot of motion with her shoulders. But you can tell that she's still learning, still a youngster on the circuit. Yeah, well, that's amazing, too, when you think about it, because with the lack of play that she had in the juniors, she's really on her second full year of competitive tennis. Hingis was winning the French Open juniors at age 12. She's actually had like six full years of competitive tennis under her belt at age 18. And it makes such a difference. You can tell with Hingis because in the crucial moments, big points, big situations, she always seems to be calm and, and ready to force an attack and come away with the point. Whereas with Serena and Venus especially, they learned the hard way. They really went for their winners. They got nervous. They made unforced errors. In big time situations, the pressure really got to them. And it took them a while to realize, wait a minute, I don't need to hit a winner on every single ball. Let me set up the point and, and try to get involved in the situation. One thing with both these players, they are coached by their mom. With the Williams sisters, their dad also coaches them. But you don't see that happening too much anymore on the circuit. Good jamming serve there from Hingis. Well, that shows the intelligence of Hingis. She doesn't have to come up and hit a huge serve. She positions it in the body of Williams. Fifteen all. Fifteen all. There's one of the mother slash coaches. And that's got to be a really tough job to balance. It definitely is a difficult situation for a mother to be on the circuit with their daughter. Orsine's taking a little nap right there, <laughs> getting ready for perhaps a long tool here. And there's that big two-hander from Serena. Well, again, she just takes a couple big steps and follows it in. Everything's falling in place, and that's the difference with Serena. If she, her timing is going well, she'll hit winners. Ah! Not a four stairs. And another break point for Serena Williams. Hingis fought off the break point in her opening service game. A chance for a 3 1 lead. struck by Serena and what she's trying to do is take advantage of the net here it's not the perfect shot to come in but she just keeps following it and it becomes a winner Hing is doing all she can just not quick enough to get to this ball she realizes it and there's the break
That's just sheer strength. What's really hurting Higgis right now is she's not getting enough depth on her ground strokes, and that's providing an opportunity for Serena to keep coming in and hitting those winners. Went for a little too much on that forehand. It's 15 all. You know, when Serena has a chance to set up or move forward, she is dangerous. And you're right, with the depth, Hingis can keep Serena on the move and keep her from setting up on the shots. Also, Serena is a difficult player to get your consistency with because Serena comes up with a big serve, powerful ground stroke. She mixes it up in terms of strength, but you don't really get a lot of consistent rallies going. The points are so quick. It's been 13 minutes and they've already played little over four games. Hingis doesn't even feel like she's warmed up yet. <laughs> the points are going so quick. Well, she better get warmed up soon. It's game point for Williams for a 4-1 lead. So Serena Williams jumps out to a 4 1 lead in the opening set. So Martina Hingis struggling a little bit from the baseline against the power and depth. No, her timing's off on a couple of the ground strokes. That time she came up too soon and obviously looks disappointed with that shot, but she's had a tough time in this tournament. She's gone three sets twice. Once was to Lisa Raymond, lost a second set in that match. The crowd was totally for her opponent. And in the next round, she went three sets again. Very uncharacteristic of Hingis. She won last week in San Diego, and this week seems to be having some difficulties. Well, last week she just destroyed Serena's older sister Venus in the final 6-4-6 love. So maybe a little uh, family payback here mm -hmm. at uh, the Acura Classic in Manhattan Beach. Revenge in the making. And what a difficult time for the Williams family because they have two daughters they have to watch. And they've done a great job really trying to keep them level-headed. Well, you can see Serena Williams with all the power. Nine winners to just one for Hingis. And Hingis has made more errors than Williams. So... Williams is playing a very clean match, and, and Hingis is just going to have to find some way to claw her way back into it. But that's really one of the strengths of Martina Hingis, is her ability to change her game when things aren't working. <laughs> Slightly unorthodox serve and volley on the first point. Swinging volley from the baseline. Whatever it takes for her to get the point. Oh. Return from Serena Williams. Well, Higgins will keep that in memory and definitely try to get in more first serves. Quick look at her first serve percentages. High percentage of first serves in for Hingis, but she's just putting the ball in play. She's not really going for much. Hasn't won a point when she's had to hit a second serve. That was lazy feet from Serena Williams, and she can tend to do that. Instead of really getting in position, she takes one or two big steps. Doesn't take the little steps to get in perfect positioning. And Martina Hingis holds with her second ace of the match. It's 4-2 Williams. That was a crucial hold for Hingis. That time she does go for more, and you can tell with her knee bend, and she powers up over the ball. Other times you see her hit more topspin and just spin it in. That time she really went for it. Great slice serve from Serena Williams. 
Well, that last serve from Hinga, she got the toss out into the court and got her body weight behind the serve instead of backing up as she was hitting it. to this ball, but what athleticism. She was totally out of that point. And Hingis now, you can see her quick hands, short backswing. One of the few points where Hingis actually was in control. bit of an opening for Hingis, 15-30. Yeah. Williams has yet to face a break point in the match. Hingis looking to break back, get back on serve here in the first set. Yeah. Two break points for Martina Hingis. Both off the backhand side. Again, that sloppy footwork hurting Williams on those last two backhands. It's especially important on the two-handed side where you don't quite have the reach that a one-handed backhand. First case of the match for Williams not to wait one break point. Oh, that's such a great serve, that wide slice. Don't have to hit it hard, but it gets your opponent way out of court. Two huge serves from Serena Williams. And when Serena sets up the serve, she stands mm. quite a bit away from the center mark. That helps her get an angle. And with her power, you still have to respect the serve up the middle. Well, that's the difference these days. Mm -hmm. You can actually just hit a booming serve and good reaction. Ball hits the top of the tape and look at that focus. No mistake about this. That's going for a winner. From double break point down, it's now advantage Williams. And with a second edge, she holds serve for 5-2. There it is. You see her serving a few feet away from the center line, but she has ability to go both directions because of her strength. Changes in the guard. Players now able to have the serve. And she's pumped up and she should be fighting off two break points. That slice serve really sets up the big serve up the middle as well on both sides of the court. And she's starting to use that more. She's starting to think more out on the court. And I think it's made her a much better player. Well, her progress just in this tournament alone in the last few years in 1997. She got to the final round of qualifying. In 98, she advanced to the quarterfinals, losing to Martina Hingis. Their first serve percentage, 74%. Not a bad percentage for second serve points won. At least she's at the halfway mark. I think Hingis was at 0% of second service points won. Right, and, and Williams is also dominating when she gets that first serve in. And when, you're serving, when you serve over 70% and you fight, and you run down balls and you, you keep the pressure on your opponent you know, with the kind of power that Williams has. It, it makes it really tough for Hingis to get back into this. Well, just her hustling after every single ball will make Hingis think, perhaps I need to hit a better shot the next time. And that 
a forced mistake. Again, she's there on that one. She didn't make the shot, didn't hit a winner. But I think that's what Fingis is going to need to do is to put more pressure on Williams, come into net more, take more chances. Uh -huh. That was a, either a frustrated forehand or I'm going to break this ball with this contact. Just a little warning message. Don't try serving over here. She is just all over this return. She strikes it and then forces the issue by coming in. She didn't need to hit a volley. And Hing is well aware that if she hits a second serve, there's just no doubt about what will happen on the return. point Martina Hingis wants to play where she can move Williams around the court. And that time she coaxed the air from the Williams forehand. Third ace for Martina Hingis. She holds. But it's Serena Williams with the lead 5-3 in the opening set and Williams will be serving for the set. Last service game, Serena Williams had to fight off two break points. Great anticipation from Hingis. She realizes that Serena Williams is coming in. She takes a pace off the ball, hits extra topspin, and just rolls across court. Serena Williams, four great gets she made, and eventually the ball landed long. Oh. Lost her balance. And Hing is starting to mix up the pace of the ball. She's not just hitting the power shot. She's hitting all kinds of things. A little sticky court there. And it's now 15.30. Another slight opening for Hingis. <laughs> and the second serve to work with. Serving for the first set down 15.30, hits the second serve, and comes away. And that's the back end she always wants to get. She kept her legs turned, her body movement going forward, didn't open up. Oh! Williams dominating with her power game two points away from the opening set. And a set point for Serena Williams. Her 
Dominguez is getting pinned to the baseline. She really can't do anything with it because the depth of Williams' shots are landing right inside the baseline. going. Great serve out wide, and she sees that Hingis is in trouble reaching for it, and with the two-hander, you really don't have that great of ability when you're pulled out wide. Great service motion. Kicked in a little bit extra, and knew she was going to come in right after it, and that's what Serena does so well. On her service motion, she tends to come in, and Hingis with the two-handed, stretched out wide. Now there's no chance getting back in for the overhead. And she's lost the first set. She's lost a few sets here in this tournament, but she may not be out. Well, if you're Serena Williams and you look at that and you go, well, I served 72%. I had four times more winners than my opponent. Made um, nine unforced errors. How am I going to play any better? And Hingis served 88% and still dropped the set. Well, one thing that will change in this particular set is Hingis will make her fight more. Williams got away in the first few games with a lot of winners, and Hingis just didn't have her timing going, but she really will make Williams fight. Mm -hmm. Hingis serving with new tennis balls. That is tough for him. This is because when she came on the circuit, she was so dominant, just rolling through matches and tournaments. And now, it's a different circumstance. She's dropping sets. She's getting served broken. She's not winning every tournament. It's an uncomfortable situation for her. Totally changes the atmosphere and her mental frame of mind. Thirty left. She went for it and questioning the call. No joy from Desi Samuels in the chair. Here's another look at it. Look how far in she's just returning this serve, cutting off the angle and awfully close. First double fault for Martina Hingis. She's starting to go for more of both first and second serve. I think she realized in that first set she just gave Williams too many easy serves to look at. It was just a couple months ago in June in Paris, Martina Hingis in the final of the only Grand Slam she had not won. French Open playing the veteran Steffi Graf. And Hingis kind of, I don't know, it, it almost looked like she mentally just lost it. Well, there you hear the crowd totally going against her. She hit an underhand serve against Steffi Graf. Steffi Graf, a crowd favorite all around the world. There's this match point. An unbelievable victory for Graf, but a, a gut-wrenching defeat for Hingis, and she didn't handle it well. No, she didn't, and she was in an unfamiliar circumstance there in the final of the Grand Slam. She got booed. 
and throughout the match, there's controversy, line calls, and how she handled them. Her mom had to go get her back on the court and tell her, come on, the right thing to do is to go back out and accept the runner-up trophy. And the emotions from that one match kind of bled over to the next tournament, Wimbledon. Definitely did. Everyone was wondering how she would handle that oh. tough loss. And she didn't do so well. Went out Wimbledon first round. And now she's under pressure once again here at the semifinals of the Acura Classic. Her mom looking on. And her mom has been pivotal in her career with her success. Because at Wimbledon, she did not go. It was one of the few tournaments that she wasn't there. Oh. And because of that, you could totally sense the difference in attitude and interest in the game that Hinga showed on court. Lost first round, went home, had some talks with her mom. And you know, there's some aspects where you can say, wait a minute, she's still a kid, 18 years of age. But in another situation, you can't show that kind of sportsmanship out on a court and disrespecting your opponents. I mean, there's, there's a line that she did cross. And because of it, the crowds have actually usually favored her opponents. She's had to earn back the respect again. Everyone has realized that she is a champion on court with her tennis. Mm -hmm. And here, coming in, and this time, she had to commit. She went in, Serena saw it, and hit the lob. But they've also realized, and the crowds and tennis fans all around the world say, you know what, we want you to be the kind of glass act that we're used to seeing, like in a Steffi Graf or Monica Sellis. Sometimes it's hard to live up to at 18 years of age. down the line. Not an easy thing to do. There it is, showing her determination and what positioning, keeping the racket ahead of her. Didn't hit it too hard. Likes these swinging volleys and makes it a little bit easier for her than going in and running around and hitting overhead, especially under lights. Again, it hit. Looked like Hingis won that point three times. She put the ball away once, and somehow Serena got it back, got back another, but the overhead was too tough. Now Hingis starting to put the pressure on Williams. Three state points where she's been coming in and attacking the net. She leads 2-1 in the second set. A lot of people forget that Martina Hingis is ranked number one in the world in singles and doubles. She's had a phenomenal doubles record through the years. And I it's just a remarkable achievement to go out, I, I don't think, since Martina Navratilova started playing singles and doubles. Lindsay Davenport was actually seated number one here in the draw. Be, their rankings had flip-flopped just last week. So Hingis, the number two seed at the bottom of the draw. Davenport out today to a very determined and very sharp Julie Allard de Cougie. Now, certainly was an upset, Davenport going out, and what a Win for Serena beating Arancha Sanchez Vicario. 
to tomorrow's final. The winner here takes on Haller Dekuji. Is that something that they might be thinking about right now, knowing that Lindsay Davenport's not waiting in, for, in the wings for him in the final? Definitely. If you play a match, and even though players say they take it one match at a time, if you know that a player that has had a hot streak on the California hard court season has won a couple of grand slams and is doing great, well, you certainly will look at this match as perhaps a final rather than a semifinal. Serena Williams to serve. She won the first set 6-3 on serve here in the second. Serena is not a, a newcomer in beating top 10 players. When she won Indian Wells, she beat Lindsay Davenport, Mary Pierce, and Steffi Groff. And when she beat Groff, she was down 2-4 in the final set and came back to win it. So. I think when Serena or Venus are in a draw, they just see themselves winning and holding the trophy before it starts. Oh. Mm -hmm. Big kick on the second serve. Really got some knee bent in there. Not only kick, but real good depth too. And the ball just jumped at her. You see, she's looking at the line there thinking, couldn't that just get a little longer? Did it move her feet at all? That ball after it hit the net went right down the center. And instead of moving out of the way, Venus just hung tight on the baseline and swung her shoulders over. There for an error, still 30-15. Oh! forehand there and it's 30 all. Mm -hmm. Williams with more than three times as many winners as Hingis, but her errors are starting to creep up a little bit here. Third into the match for Serena Williams. And that one had some heat on it. If they had a clock to speed clock, I mean, that could have broken the <laughs> speed clock. Because look at that. Martina just has to smile saying, what is that? Well, Serena's sister Venus holds the world record at 125 miles an hour. Ah! So Williams holds, and it's 2 all in the second set. Serena's been clocked just around 120, you know, so she doesn't really have the same kind of power that Venus does. That's just amazing. <laughs> what helps, I mean, we saw it in the earlier match where Davenport, when she needed a point, she came up with the serve, but she had no answer in return. <laughs> There's a difference. Hing is using her head a little bit more, not going for the big power, just positioning her serve. She waits for the opportunity. She doesn't always go after the same place with the serve. A lot of times you'll see players going to the same exact spot. Too big a swing there from Serena. Well, she was coming in so quickly, she really didn't have time to stop and hit it, Hingis in trouble, and all she had to do was block it the other direction and got a little too excited. Went with the strength, and certainly would like to have that ball back. So 
fluid mm -hmm. on the overhead motion. It's a matter of who gets to come into net first in this second set. Well, the player who dominates off the ground is the one who's got the opportunity. No. <laughs> Hingis needs a few more of those kind of gifts to keep in this match. She's got a game point to take a 3-2 lead here in the second set. Mm -hmm. And she's done it. 3-2 Hingis in the second. Hingis is almost in a position of waiting for Serena to start throwing in a lot of unforced errors because she's played pretty solid throughout the match. But now, as it gets closer in the second set, Williams has been making it a couple uncharacteristic mistakes. Good percentages from Hingis, high percentage. But you notice in the first set, she was serving even a higher percentage in, but wasn't winning as much. I think she's actually decided that she has to go for more on her serve. Winning 50% of her second serves now, so she's got a little bit of a control of it. But look how Williams is dominating on her first serve. And her second serve. 81% of first serve points won, but then not a huge drop. 62% she's winning on her second serve, so that is really dominant tennis. However, when the pressure starts coming in in the later stages of a set, it makes a tremendous difference. Well, once again, you can see Williams dominating with mm -hmm. the winners and leading in the error column as well. But I mean, those numbers, 21 winners, just 13 unforced errors. That's really solid tennis. With those numbers, you think she'd be leading in this second set. Well, that's really a kind of a testament to Martina Hingis and how well she fights and uses mm -hmm. what she has. Mm -hmm. Four face for Serena Williams. She's showing the confidence and good positioning on the volley. Just blocking at that time. She elected not to hit the swinging volley, and it paid to her advantage. And another wide slice for her fifth ace. That is such a devastating serve because it sets up the power. When you have to respect the angle, then the power becomes even more effective, like a pitcher with a great curveball. She has learned so much in such a short amount of time on the circuit. But the real key for her is to be able to keep it up, and not to start trying to go for too much too soon. It's this thing that she's learned to do really well. An off pace return from Serena. She kind of got handcuffed by that serve. She did. She caught Hingis off guard. Oh. 
30 all. King is having to fight for every point. It used to be in years past that if she lost games or lost a set in a match or a tournament, it'd be because she got bored and lost her attention span and what was happening. Now it's because other players are just taking the tour. Well, I think Williams has got her attention right now. And she's got a break point. The first one of the second set. Golden opportunity. Only one break of serve in the match. <laughs> Martina Hingis now gain point to take a 4-3 lead in the second set. Serve percentage dropping in this game. But Hingis holds on. She leads 4 3, second set. It was a right play from Williams, but what happened was she hesitated at the last possible moment, thinking the ball might sail long. I think if she would have left it, it would have gone long. She didn't want to take a chance, and here it is. Hesitation and just hits it in the bottom of the net. It's a good return. She's too far back. If she would have been a little bit closer, it might have been easier. But those are the mistakes you want to stay away from, especially against someone the caliber of Martina Hingis. You know, this is an amazing match when you think about it. It's, it's really been dictated and dominated by Serena Williams, and yet she plays one bad service game here, and you'd have Hingis serving to even the match. That's what it is amazing. They've been playing under an hour, and it's in the second set, and here Hingis is hanging in tough. I mean, you look at, you look at the winners, and you think, how can Hingis even be in the match? But she's winning her points by hitting shots that are difficult for Serena to handle, but not clean winners. Well, the only disadvantage of going for so many shots is, of course, you're going to get some winners in that category, but you will also get some unforced errors. And eventually, in tight situations, those could, those could fall in the net, go wide, go long, and that's what Hingis is hoping for and relying upon to stay in this match. Serena Williams to serve 3-4 second set. She won the first set 6-3. She was there. Hingis loves the cross court roll. She hits a lot of topspin on it. What happens is it, it dips. Here again, well, is it deep enough? She watches her approach shot for too long, hesitates again, and just went for too much. She forgot the underspin on that part of the volley. But she keeps coming in. To me, that's impressive because she's lost two points in a row at net, and then she comes back in again and keeps the pressure on. That shows that she's not afraid to make mistakes. And she follows that up with her sixth ace. Great versatility. So many times she served out wide for the ace that time. Pingus was hovering over on the forehand and down the middle another ace. Ah! 
surprise tactics, serve and volley. Doesn't work when the surf lands long. <laughs> Think she hits the kick serve out wide and then places the backhand down the line. Almost wished it over in that direction. Again, an open stance, but she took something off of it, therefore, it didn't land long. Good deep return from Hingis. 40 30. Turn from Hingis sets up that point. Mm. Hingis guessed right on the return. That helped her tremendously. So she fights off a couple game points. Pressure on Williams. Mm -hmm. Wow, talk about threading the needle. That time. Good positioning though, she stayed turned long enough to keep the ball in. A lot of times on those she gets excited and stands up and it goes long. Serena Williams holds for a full second set. Much tougher service game for Serena Williams though. Oh. And now this pressure shifts right back to Martina Hingis. She has to hold here or Serena Williams will be serving for a chance to play in the final. A determined Serena Williams. A forehand return just caught Hingis off guard. Good composure too from Serena. These are tense times. Just trying to keep her emotions in check. Oh, no. Such a delicate balance. Trying to maintain that composure of how hard do you hit, how aggressive do you play before you start hitting too hard and making mistakes. Oh, oh Serena. She has plan A to hit hard and go for winners, and then she has plan A, that's to hit hard and go for winners, and then the last plan is to hit hard and go for winners. And sometimes that doesn't work in really tight situations. She's not trying to throw off and just place the ball in and wait for the right opportunity, but that's not her style. Creeping in. And there, that's the one she needs to hit an off-pace ball, cross-court. That's just too good. Hingis took control of that point right from the start. Well, she hit a short return, and that gave the opportunity for Hingis to take the net away, come in, and dictate the pace. That's Game. what she likes to do. Game point for Hingis for a 5-4 lead in the second. <laughs> Martina Hingis leads 5-4, second set. Serena Williams has the first set. Once again, the pressure shifts. It's now back on Serena Williams. Well, Serena has been serving awfully well. She's relied upon it. And this is when she really needs to get in another couple first serves. 
Williams has not been broken yet tonight. She's faced two break points, both in the first set. We are at the Acura Classic, Manhattan Country Club, Manhattan Beach, California, a beautiful summer evening. We're on the last of the three California hardcourt tournaments. Last year, completely and totally dominated by Lindsay Davenport. This year, it was Davenport who won the first tournament up in Stanford, California, mm -hmm. followed by Hingis, who won last week in San Diego. And this week, we will definitely have a new Acura champion as Julie Allard de Cougie is in the final, and she will play the winner of this semifinal match. Well, we talked about the hardcore season and Hingis having won last week, where Serena Williams has not played in a singles tournament since the French Open. She played the Federation Cup, but doesn't look like she's short of match play Thank you. Thank you. the way she's striking the ball today. Possible. She got back a big serve, <laughs> scampered around the court, kept getting another ball back. But again, the confidence from Serena is just incredible. 32 winners from Serena Williams, seven for Martina Hingis. Well, the only way you can get that kind of confidence is winning matches, and that's what she started to do this year. She won her first singles title. 99 at the Paris Indoors. Went on to win at Indian Wells. Got to the finals of Lipton. Lost her sister in three sets. And struggle throughout the point. The crowd cheering her on throughout, and then finally the ball lands long. That could have been match point right there for her. She was so excited. What an effort. is just incredible. Hesitates, waits for the last second to see where Hingis will hit it and gets it just in the nick of time. Hingis is saying, what's happening? The ball keeps coming back. And then she finishes the point. Hingis says, I'm gonna make her run a little bit more. Hits the top of the tape. And now she's ready for a break. <laughs> wow. But it's five all, second set. That was a big point for Hingis. Well, Trying to quiet the crowd <laughs> on top of quieting Serena. Yeah, even though Williams won those last two points, it was Williams who was doing most of the running. They've been on court for just over an hour. That was a great shot because she took some of the pace off the ball. She didn't just try to hit it deep in the corner. She took her time. Starting to show some more depth in her ground strokes. 
Again, a crucial game for Martina Hingis. Five all, second set. That's just a beauty. Stepped well inside the court to cut off the angle. But it is her strength that's helping, and a lot of other players can do that, but they can't muscle the ball in. She not only gets to it, but makes a winner out of it. Unbelievable hustle from Serena Williams. What a fighter. Just when you think she's out of the point, she gets back in. Gets to this one. How does she manage it? And boy, is she ready to take it now. Two break points. Hingis has to be thinking, how many times do I have to hit an outright winner before I win the point? Oh, that was a careless error. Here she fought so hard, and on the very first shot, she gives it right back to Hingis. Still break point, still a chance for a 6-5 lead. Second set. Martina Hingis is not losing this match. Serena Williams is winning it. There's a big difference. Serena has fought for every point. This is from the last break. And Serena just fought incredibly hard. And that time, she didn't have to keep running back and forth. But what happens is, on those particular gets, Hingis is thinking about it in the back of her mind. She's thinking, I need to make a better shot. I need to go for more because she's getting everything back. Well, now it's crunch time. Serena Williams will be serving for the match. She has not been broken. Do you do something different now? Do you, do you try to change your game at all? Do, do you try to do something that no, absolutely not. I think what she's been doing on her service games has been extraordinary. She's been getting in a lot of first serves, and when she hasn't, she's hit good, deep second serves. The one problem that could happen now, and it happens to a lot of players that are trying to get an upset, is they get too excited. Their adrenaline overpowers what they can really do, what their capabilities are. So she has to stay within her game. And other times, players come in and say, you know what, I'm just going to wait for the, my opponent to lose a match. Serena has to stay within her game plan, which means taking it to her. And an ace or two wouldn't hurt either. Didn't need that. She's better off going for the serve that's helped her at the beginning, which was that one out wide. She absolutely has to get in her first serve to have a chance of winning the service game. Costly mistake there from Hingis. Well, Hingis knows now she has to come up with her best tennis. If not, she's on the next flight to the next tournament.
the very beginning, Serena did not have her balance in that point. She again kind of slipped on her back in and, and she came in on that shot. Even though it was hit with some depth, it bounced right. Perfect for Hingis. And she likes that cross court. That's what she needed, the first, first serve of this game. And her seventh eighth takes her to 30 all. Two points away from the final. Serena Williams, match point. Well, she's been in this situation before with Hingis and managed to win one of their four contests, so. What a performance from Serena Williams so far in this match. And as close as the score was, it wasn't that close on the court. I mean, Williams dominated most of the points. She really did, did not lose her serve throughout the match. And then a surprise again, serves and volleys. Takes some of the power off of that, spun it in, and was hoping for this to land in. Hingis, her favorite roll cross court, hits the top of the tape. And victory's feeling good for Serena Williams. So Serena Williams will take on Julie Allard de Cougy in the final. And the number one and two players in the world are ousted in the semifinals of the Acura Classic. Look at the match summary and you can see 36 winners for Venus Williams to just eight for Martina Hingis. That's just phenomenal to come out and hit that amount of winners and hit them consistently throughout the match. It wasn't as if she played terrific tennis in the first set and then fell apart. She sustained it throughout the two sets. So it's Serena Williams in the final against Julie Allard de Cougy at the Acura Classic from Manhattan Beach, California. Okay, Serena Williams has uh, kindly agreed to stay out tonight and answer some questions. We've done this for many years on the WTA tour. If any of you have questions that you'd like to ask Serena, Jason's over here on the west side, Sophie. 